okay, so I get that you needed symbols to represent every last one of the villains, but like, who did these pins? And where can I get some? Before I open this review of chapter 340 of My Hero Academia, please do me a favor, leave your own thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below, leave a like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, if you don't mind, hit the little notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel, and I also do happen to have a Patreon, so if you really like my videos and you want to leave any support at all, just drop it. Easy as a dollar a month, I greatly appreciate it. But now, let's get into it. What's up guys, I'm Pencil here, and here we are, here's chapter 340 of My Hero Academia, aka the story of how we became heroes part 3. If this is, like, My Hero Academia is supposed to end within the year, right? We better not get, like, 40 of these, like, Horror Code, did you just run out of chapter titles? Like, I wonder if that's a thing, right? Do you just start doing this when you run out of chapter titles? Because seriously, just c come up with new ones. Like, uh, the, what would you call it? I would literally just call this thing War Council. Like, if, if you really want to, like, just give it a name, call it War Council. Call it, I don't know, the Final Deliberation, something along those lines. Just the, give, give it different names, gosh darn it. But regardless of that, let's hop into the chapter itself. So we open up, and we get to see that we are at Central Hospital. And they're trying to work like properly within this facility so they're like in the middle of multiple police stations and i guess this is supposed to be like a safe zone for certain people and i guess that certain person includes ayama or is ayama i'm not sure uh, whoa sure remember? i'm not sure but i mean i guess he's a vital asset but like is he though like th that's the thing i'm really wondering what what the what the goal is here with ayama because we see that he may be like an information leak or alert, but as his parents have already admitted, unless they're unless they're fibbing, because to be fair, they could all be fibbing right here, right now. But they have no way to contact Oliver One. They just need to wait for him to contact them. And what's to say that he doesn't already know that Ayama's been exposed? Like obviously he has some sort of information network, so why would he use something that's obviously going to be a trap? Whatever. We open up and we get to see that Aoyama is apparently currently waiting upon the results of his investigation if you will and i'm assuming this investigation is like not only the investigation like oh are, how guilty are you how complicit are you in these events but also like the investigation of his biology to see if he has any little nagant things in him that'll make him go boom boom and apparently thanks to ayama being here he like he kind of restricted everybody because now whole new circumstances need to be taken. Like all force and interest that was initially on like the liberation front and taking care of all for one is now being split up because they had a rat. And now they aren't sure if that's the only rat, what the rat can do, what or the capabilities of the rat. The rat has messed everything up. And now apparently all the people here are like the trusted confidants, the trusted individuals that they can speak on, considering that they need they need to essentially come with a proper plan and they need people to execute the plan. So right now, they're essentially deliberating and trying to make a proper choice on their next move. And due to this, and due to Hawk's ability as like a strategist, currently Endeavor San and Best Genius, two like it's weird to say Best Genius is combat oriented. I try to add so many syllables to orientated, but it seems it seems weird to say that Best Genius is like a combat kind of guy, but I guess he can do it because they'll be in charge of the main hero force. And the thing is, is that right now they're essentially using every single resource they could have, but it's at the same time limiting their options because they don't want to broaden things out too much to, due to the obvious implications of all for one's information network. But at the same time, they got to take use of every single factor they have or else they're going to lose. And I like the dichotomy. Like the, it's weird. It's not necessarily a dichotomy. I feel like that's the wrong word. I'd say like catch 22 is the right phrase that the heroes are in right now. Cause the thing is they want to use as many people as possible. But as we've seen with Aoyama, even inside your own ranks, there are likely some traders that are just going to be informing all for one of things that are going to happen. So you want to use everything you have, but you never, you don't know if everything you have is clean. So you're in this weird scenario where you're just stuck in sheer limbo, but you have to do something. And I like that Horikoshi has made the heroes realize that. And notably we see a sleeper pick for best girl she isn't she isn't murko or maruko see now now i'm saying murko oh my but ragdoll who i i mean i get why she's here because she technically has no real point in she has no point in the more fight combat side of the narrative considering her quirk is gone and well she just i guess she she doesn't well she wasn't necessarily a fighter in the first place anyway but it's weird to see that she's here and 
Notably, I guess I suppose the main reason she's here is because I don't know. I don't get it. Really, why aren't they here? I guess they're just busy being heroes. But <laughs> it seems like there's something to do with like trust issues or something like that. Like I don't. I'm not sure. I'm gonna read the official translation on this one because Hawks is like, I apologize. It's not that I don't trust them. And then they have this really cute interaction where they both go and yeah. But I don't see like she's here. I'm assuming only because she's quirkless and she has no other value, and we need a represent. I don't know. This was this was really weird. I was wondering why she's here outside of we need a female character here. I don't know. That's weird. What is she gonna do? She doesn't even have her quirk anymore, and she's it's not like she can provide any insight on. It. We already know how her quirk works, but then again, we see that she is. I guess she's here to like iron out necessary de i don't get that i don't know i'm sorry i'm stressing really hard on this but i'm trying to figure out why she's here because on the initial reading of the chapter i didn't get it on my second reading of the chapter i still don't get it and um on my now third reading of the chapter I, I, i'm just still as confused because she says quite obviously her search quirk is being used maliciously now so she wants to be as big as the help as she can to hurt you them i guess she said she says you guys but i'm assuming it's just like the entire hero force what can you do you don't have hands anymore if you ever did and you don't got a quirk. So what good is your... If I, if anything, you being here is a liability. <laughs> but then again, All Might's here too. So he's nothing but a liability too. But hey, it'd be like that when it'd be like that sometimes. So we get to see the rundown with All Might. And he's like, ah. So this is not really either the best or the second best. But we do got like a third best-ish plan. And, but it's something that's absolutely necessary. And he brings up a point that I like kind of gotten hyped for at the end of the last chapter review the idea of splitting up the all for one gang essentially he admits that due, due to all the data they have it seems like shigaraki has surpassed all for one in terms of strength but i'm assuming this is the all for one that all i mentioned is the one in kamino should be completely understanding of all for one's raw physical strength and the thing is is like I don't really, I don't really get this, <laughs> like, how are you going to physically separate them? And to be fair, as I mentioned at the end of the last chapter, if one just showed up at UA and one showed up at Shiketsu, you're just done. Like, I, you, notably, they don't need to be together to be the mightiest. Like, individually on their own, no one, like, Midoriya would definitely lose if he was facing either one of them in a 2v1. But he's losing in a 1v1 right now, too. I don't see Midoriya beating all for one, the old body. Or even Shigaraki, unless he like stores up a million bits of like whatever it's called, I forget what it's called, the um store up power where he gets to like do fake 100% stuff. I don't really see how this man is out here keeping up with either of them, considering how strong they were. Like, oh my, sure, you were very, very weak at the time, but 100 you were still able to use 100%. They Midoriya isn't at that point yet, but obviously, still, it is important to get them separated. Because with the strength that Shigaraki displayed, on top of the strength that they already know All For One has, it's a, it's a no-sell if they're both together just running through the country. And it seems like they're just 100% confident in the fact that, yeah, we there's like nothing we can do. If these guys both show up, we're done, son. And the one of the guys has a very good question of, like, why didn't... Why didn't they show up together at the Star and Stripe battle if it was so pivotal that the two be together? And All for One is apparently susceptible, or at least the main body is susceptible to New Order. Or at least it was, considering he himself is wholly All for One. Meanwhile, the Shigaraki body is a weird combination of All for One and Shigaraki, which is actually a nice little detail. I didn't necessarily think of why <laughs> the main body didn't show up. I just thought it was like, didn't feel like showing up and it wasn't needed and obviously it wasn't but hey i mean that's a really good reason because to be fair one of these guys is going through an identity crisis while the other one is solidly himself and the thing is suki su now masa i'm just keep calling him now masa now masa brings up the fact like okay i get that that's the strat keeping them 10 kilometers apart but one, they're super fast and they can cross the entire distance. Okay, Namas doesn't say that, but I say that. But two, they would know to stick together. But the thing is, right, I don't... And is it just me, but does that not seem like the most optimal play for all for one to have at all? Like, 
you probably want to keep because to be fair with the loss of twice you can't have like a vanguard and then the final boss you would only have the final boss but i'd say you let the shikaraki body which is as they say stronger than the old body roam wild put dobby with the old body and just ruin the world like uh, like i said a two side collapsing front where one appears at Shiketsu, one appears at UA, and just converges to meet each other, it's pretty much unstoppable, because no no matter what you do, it's eventually going to be a 2v1 anyway, and no one can win the 1v1. So I don't, I don't really see what the strat is here, but we get to see that the main issue, or a big issue, would be Dobby, who essentially is a wild card that can kind of just show up anywhere, because if he's there and uses that like same level of firepower that he used in the war, he could essentially just crisp up a whole ton of enforcements. And we get to see that, yeah, why Ragdoll, why are you here? But we get to see that the main goal of the heroes now is to not just have their cake, but they also want to eat it too. Because they're trying to separate every last major villain and isolate all of them in order to crush them one by one. Now, here's the thing, right? I do think you could hypothetically... Like, if you were to throw a determined... Ev ever. <sighs> I can't speak English. If you were to throw a determined Endeavor and Todoroki at Dobby, I do believe they'd be able to take him down. If you were to throw, like, all, every female character at Toga, I do believe you can take her down. If you were to throw all of 1A and 1B and 1C, and general studies, at either of the all for one bodies, they're all getting smacked. Like, even with Midoriya, they, I don't know. I At least I haven't been convinced by the narrative enough to believe that Midoriya can confidently, even with support, take down all for one, even in his old body. Especially considering if UA shows up to help him at all, they're just all hostages. Like, the, the, the teamwork is not the dream work in this one. And I know... Bakugo is so confident in the idea that oh, with my new scanner bomb technique, I'll be able to keep up with and defeat a one for all or all for one user. But um, no, he won't. So I don't really see why. I don't really see a way that they win this. But we get to see that this plan seems a little bit too uh, like laid back or simple and kind of complicated if you really want to break down and separate every single one, especially if they're going to be probably doing the exact opposite even though i don't think that's viable like i'm not gonna lie i don't think the i don't think the rat pack strategy is the most viable thing i feel like you want to like infrastructure this where you split up your forces but hey maybe not maybe all for one is just trying to move in like an early fire emblem maddening or lunatic playthrough and just having his whole bag of units just in one area but we get to see that the linchpin of this plan and the whole backup to it is using Aoyama. And notably, like, once again, the, the just the uh, Aoyama slop off, bro. Like, what, what, what is it? What is it that what, that this boy has done? Because, like, All Might is supporting him. Like, he's still wavering. A young boy, born quirkless, and uses a tool for his life. And I get that. But, like, as Nomasa very clearly states, yeah. I do sympathize with him, but looking at it objectively, the fact that he betrayed society as a whole remains unchanged. And what makes you think he won't do it again? Like, that's my thing. Like, you can't forgive Aoyama. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even like. The th I would straight just throw him in jail. No matter what possible utility he would have, I if he was willing to betray y'all before y'all knew, he's definitely willing to betray y'all after y'all knew. Because essentially, he's already guilty. But apparently all might still believes in young aoyama and i just personally personally aoyama hasn't proven himself still to this point to have enough clout with all these different characters to suddenly be trusted however i will give all my credit he trusts aizawa and to be fair i trust aizawa even if aizawa is missing an eye <laughs> i kind of forgot like to be fair the war arc ended I think it's almost going on a year now because I'm trying to think. I started reviewing MHA around chapter two, 291, I'm pretty sure. So the war arc may be approaching like year a year of 
being finished with serialization. Whoa, a year being finished with serialization at this point. So I for, kind of forgot his eye got taken out. But it's cool to see him with the eye patch. But then we get to see that this Yoshi doctor is like, Ayo, not the only lie. Seems like his brain waves are clean. Seems like his body is clean. He doesn't seem to have anything that greatly signifies like all for one could detonate him or could be listening. Seems like he's clean. And I guess you can detect that. Let's go with that. Let's just, I'm not even going to complain about that. Let's just go with that. And it seems like what Aizawa notes that he, all for one essentially took different strategy routes, right? Like with Lady Nagant, he took the route of like actual physical insurance because she was an older woman who was purely capable of making her own decisions. And thusly, if he just gave her a quirk and let her roam free, then she would definitely just become a liability. Because if she was convinced or felt like turning her quirk against all for one, she could be a liable threat to him. You know, a sniper shot to the head, even if he can regenerate, it's, not, it's no fun for anybody involved. However, at the same time, it seems like he was a little bit lazier with Aoyama. Like, instead of leaving any, like, actual physical security with Aoyama inside his body with his quirk, according to Aizawa, it seems like all Aoyama had was, like, you know, fear and trauma. That's the, that's the only thing that uh, he was being relied on for Aoyama to essentially be an obedient little boy. And I don't know. That, that one is shockingly short-sighted for all for one. Like, I, I felt like this dude who has contingencies on top of his contingencies on top of his contingencies wouldn't rely on fear. Especially considering, at least from the time that he would have planted the quirk in Aoyama, he should have had way more resources than the time he planted the quirk in Lady Nagant. Like, he had the doctor. He had so many. He had essentially had so many more tools at hand. That it's more shocking to me that he placed a detonation device or quirk or whatever within Lady Nagant and not Aoyama, because I feel like. The trauma could be worn off or something like that, or at least it, it just doesn't, didn't really make sense to me that All for One would just let Aoyama safe. And I don't think, not not that I don't believe Aizawa here, but I feel like there's a little bit more to this narrative that we aren't just getting a glimpse of just yet. I feel like there is something with Aoyama because it does. it's just not, at this point, it doesn't match the characterization of All for One to not leave a little bit of insurance, a little down payment within Aoyama to make sure he doesn't betray. But we get to see Aizawa ask Aoyama a very important question. Are you afraid? And Aoyama stays silent. And it seems like Aizawa is the one who has to like start to rip questions or rip statements out of Aoyama. Because he straight up says, like, yo, not gonna lie, you just happen to be the luckiest human being on this planet because for some reason that the reader of this manga chapter and the current reviewer cannot understand your friends stood up for you so what are you afraid of no for one and i almost like yeah straight up uh all for one's kind of scary you know he threatened to kill me and my entire family and that's no fun but on top of that uh i just don't think i'm like them i'm not i'm not built that way because they're all heroes. Meanwhile, me, I sold them out for a bag of chips. No, I'm kidding. But I sold them out for my life. And it seems like he's he's just confident that if that kind of offer appeared before him, if all for one just popped up and was like, hey, Aoyama, what are you doing? What you doing? On <laughs> that Isabella from Phoenix and Ferb type beat, he would just betray him right then. And there. Like, he would turn around and fire at Midoriya again. And here's the thing, right? Y'all, y'all have also been fighting for Aoyama's life in the comments. So big, big ups to all y'all Aoyama defenders out there. I won't fist fight y'all because y'all are probably buff. Like if you, if you have the gains, the mental gains to defend Aoyama here, you definitely have the physical gains to accompany that. So I ain't gonna try to fight you. But <laughs> like, that's the thing. Like I don't even. This is the thing. I don't blame Aoyama for doing what he did. I just would never forgive him for doing what he did. Because as he straight up admits, if the big murder man <laughs> threatened to murder him he would betray them again and to be fair when i'm as powerful powerless as aoyama is in this respective situation i'd be scared to if the rock himself came up to me and made me an offer i couldn't refuse essentially literally couldn't refuse because it would he would take my life if i did i wouldn't i would not fight the rock unless i was 
unless I had, had had a peacemaker on me, I wouldn't I wouldn't really be the one to fist fight the Rock. Just like Aoyama should be the one to fist fight all for one. So I can't even get mad at him for that. And the thing is, Aoyama's like, yo, not gonna lie to you. That death be looking a little bit tasty, looking a little bit scrumptious right now. And once again, I don't blame him because he feels like he's once again just like our heroes. He's gonna catch twenty two because if he tries to reconcile he puts his friends and himself in danger before all for one because all for one can figure out he slipped and betrayed and next thing you know who knows like almost parents are dead he's dead so on and so forth and on top of that if he doesn't do what they say he's just gonna be locked up in prison forever and he'd rather just go and die and the thing is Ayamo, like aizawa gets it too but i don't get it like he <laughs> Because he goes on to say, like, yo, by the way, no matter how the circumstances were, they don't excuse your actions. And, yeah, they don't. But we get, to, uh, I'm glad that, I'm glad that he at least tells Ayama the truth. He's like, yo, I'm not guaranteeing that you're going to remain in UA. And he shouldn't. He should remain in jail, even after he helps them. But the reason that Aoyama, the, the reason that Aizawa is here, essentially, is that he's going to be real with Aizawa. He's going to be, I keep getting their names switched up because they're both A's. And then they're both double A's. Now I think about it. They start with A and end with A. But the reason I was here is to give it to Aoyama straight. Like, yo, not going to lie. Your friends are nice to you. But I'm going to tear away the fear. And I'm going to be real with you. You have to fight. That's the only option <laughs> you have left. And I'm not going to lie. Dr. K. Dr. K. Dr. K. Like, all my Attack on Titan fans out there. When I heard, when I just saw a fight, I was like, Shinso Sasage. Like, I don't, I don't know. That one, that one caught me off guard. But then we get to see, you know, Yama is like, yeah, I get it. I know I need to fight. I need to become a pawn. And I'm glad that I was just being real with him. Like, yes, you are a pawn. Because, like, either we put you in jail forever and you're useless or you become a pawn to help us. But, hey, whatever. Yeah, I'm not going to let you just give up and wallow away. I'm going to make sure you don't go and suffer some dark hole. You're going to die in the bright light so we can use you and get the every last drop of usage out of you. And it seems like Aizawa is still declaring that he's going to take care of all the students in the hero course. And Ayama is currently in the hero course. So, yeah, bada bing, bada boom. Great. Ayama's he's not redeemed. I doubt. I hope he doesn't get redeemed. Actually, no, fine. A redeem, I'd say this. Attempt to redeem Aoyama before you. And to be fair, I guess Horikoshi already redeemed him because everyone's already forgiven him. At least any of our main characters. But if attempt to redeem Aoyama before you attempt to redeem Shigaraki. Please, please. But we see that Aoyama is meant to learn the lesson that uh, Aizawa teaches all of his students to live a life without regrets and remorse. He must live happily and he must make sure that you walk along the path of those that lent his life to him. And he confidently says, we're going to protect you. And trust me, as long as you're with your fellow students, you'll be just fine. And... You know, it's nice, but fine. Like, as much as I don't like <laughs> the whole Aoyama backpacking, it's fine. I'll, though I'll admit, once again, like, Horikoshi has been good with taking Aoyama's, like, more comical design and making it a lot more serious. But, like, this panel that I'm supposed to, that I suppose is supposed to be, like, emotional, where he has, like, this one single tear falling from his eyes and he has a look of determination on his face. It just looks goofy. Like, I don't know. I can't take it seriously. But we get to see that Aoyama's like, okay, I can help you, I guess, but, like, what is a criminal like me going to be of use? How am I going to be helpful to anyone? And as Aizawa notes that he's scared, he's like, oh, don't worry, we have a whole plan for that. And then we cut away, because plans. And we get to see that not only will he be walking with all of his fellow 1A students, but Shinso himself has popped back up. <laughs> Remember that guy? I barely do. No, I'm kidding. But hey, that's the end of the chapter. And you know what? It was a it was a this was a weird chapter though. I'm not gonna lie. Because like I don't get why Ragdoll was there. I don't get the plan that they have. I feel like they're just I feel like everyone's underestimating themselves in this chapter or overestimating some of their stuff. Like I don't get why All for One didn't leave an insurance policy with Aoyama, especially when he had more resources too back in the day. I don't get why they suddenly think that if they separate everybody, especially the two main All for Ones, that they're somehow going to win, even though their main MC, their main fighting force against those All for Ones is still likely going to lose to either of them. I don't get why Ragdoll's there. I don't get why 
Shin still just pops up right at the very no, but that's fine. Like the chapter is just weird, so I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. It's not like it's bad or anything. It's just that it feels like this chapter is saying stuff, but like doesn't. Ha it's weird to say. What what's the word I'm looking? Well, that's the, not the word. What's the words I'm looking for? Like the chapter is giving a lot of information, but sort of like just bouncing off. Like none, none of this, none of this is clicking with me. None of this is resonating. But I guess that's fine. It'll probably resonate with someone else, which is why I'm still going to give it the 7 out of 10. So, those are my thoughts on the chapter. Please tell me your thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Also, make sure you hit that little notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel. And if you want to help your boy out, got a Patreon link down below. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is That Guy with a Pencil, writing off.